is when the spread also dies with them. There's power in delegating, and so truth be told, it took giving up some control on my part for things that didn't necessarily get done the way I thought they should be done in order to position them to take responsibility. Becky and I were joking just the other day about how serving on a committee in a church or some other organization oftentimes becomes a life sentence. You know, once you've been selected, you're there for life. And I have to confess that it's a double-edged sword. The right way, which equals my way, or a different way, which obviously isn't the right way if it's not my way. And that requires trusting, first of all, in the abundance of God, that God can create abundantly and that other people might actually, because of God's creativity, do things in different and sometimes even better ways. If the 12 had held tightly to what they were doing, Stephen wouldn't happen. Philip wouldn't have happened. And we might not be here this morning, but they were willing in the face of a changing and growing situation to delegate the task. The second thing that grabs my attention is, well, attention. The Greek word that's used for attention or for looking at in this text is attenzio, to fix one's eyes upon, to look steadily, to gaze intently. The word used in Acts 6.15 as Stephen's trial began were these. All who sat in the council looked intently at Stephen and what they saw was that his face was like an angel. I imagine that they couldn't hold that gaze for long because it would have meant paying attention to the person that they believed was the enemy of their faith. The pivotal point in this story for Stephen, in my opinion, came when he transferred his gaze from the people he was debating, the people who were trying to kill him, who had become enemy and other, and instead paid attention to Jesus. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed at what is really real. Jesus at the right hand of God. Amy Oden, a commentator, wrote this. If Stephen focused solely on the Sanhedrin, he might have been paralyzed with terror, I think that would have happened to me, or outrage or sorrow. But instead, he continued to focus on God with us. Even in this horror, he is steady, he is clear, and he continues to bear witness to the love of God. Even as he is being stoned, his words, Lord, do not hold this sin against them, reveal that he was rooted in love and focused on Jesus. He and we are freed from blaming, defending, explaining, or winning. American psychologist William James said this, at the end of your days, your life will have been what you paid attention to. Did you know that the average American spends seven hours and 11 minutes each day looking at screens? What about you? What about me? What is it that we pay attention to? And I have to confess that when I get involved in political discussions or when I watch a news channel, I get infuriated about what they are doing and about how they could stop these things from happening. Whatever side you are on, that is what we do. Rather than looking to Jesus and seeing that Jesus might be in this situation, even as he was in this situation with what was happening to Stephen. And that brings me to my third point. 
The third thing that grabs me is something that I read um, just this past week in an in a email that was sent out by our Associate Conference Minister, Marvin Silver, and he called it the bystander effect. Um, just this past week, an, an officer present at the horrific murder of George Floyd and who did nothing to stop the person who was laying and kneeling on Lloyd's, or Floyd's neck was found guilty of aiding and abetting in Floyd's death. He wasn't just an innocent bystander. Silver said this, one of the greatest threats to our courage, current culture is when good people stand by and do nothing in the face of hate, racism, or indifference, or poverty, or the inability to resolve conflict peacefully. And I believe that therein lies one of the greatest passages, of the of tra greatest truths of this passage. Saul, the holder of their cloaks, became the leader of the movement to persecute the followers of Jesus. And on his murderous way, he would have had, he had his own encounter of gazing at the face of Jesus when he was blinded by a great light and he heard Jesus say from heaven, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Grace turned the persecutor into the one who would carry the gospel to the Gentiles, the one for whom our church is named. You see, and Martin Luther King was right. The time is always right to do something right. And honestly, it is pretty easy to be a bystander. And it takes a lot of courage to act. So this is what I take from this text. And you can take whatever it is that spirit speaks to you. The importance of delegation the importance of delegating things to others so that the church can grow. Secondly, to turn your eyes upon Jesus as the old hymn goes. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And third, be a disciple, not a bystander. These are all timely lessons for today's world and for us. May we heed them well. May it be so. Amen.
affirmation of faith that is in our bulletins. We believe in one God, who is creator, maker of all we see and all we don't see, who is ruler of the universe, source of all creation. We believe in one God, who is Jesus Christ, God from God, light from light, true God and true human. He is one with the creator, the word made flesh, our Messiah, Savior of all creation. We believe in one God, who is Holy Spirit, breath of God moving among us, who is one with the Creator, one with the Christ, our Comforter and our God, Sustainer of all creation. You may be seated. As we go to this time of prayer, please remember to um, take your bulletin home, and on the back page there is a list of people who request our prayers and people who would appreciate cards. Um, I know from personal experience and testimony of others that somehow prayer um, helps. It, it gives us a sense of comfort that God is with us and oftentimes changes things. So our prayers, because of the Holy Spirit's power, are powerful things to give. So let us, let us go to prayer. Holy God, first of all, I, I can't come to prayer to you this morning without um, just the despair and the disgust and the disappointment of the number of shootings we have had in our nation just within the last few days. It seems like no place, schools or shopping centers or hospitals, or subways, that, that there are places that we would take for granted as safe. And yet, um, in our nation, they have become places that can be unsafe. Lord, um, prayers go out for the, the family members of the victims and the people who witnessed the terror. And prayers go out to our governments, to our state and federal governments. Prayers that somehow we can create legislative ways to end the gun violence. And at the same time, Lord, we need hearts that know how to see Jesus in all situations rather than people who are out to hurt us or who are our enemies. We need healing as a people. We cannot simply be bystanders to these situations. So God, call us as you will to do and to act and to give, to change this situation. God of oneness through the ancestors, Sarah and Abraham and Hagar, you sowed yourself to be the same God, no matter where our ancestors wandered no matter where they were called home. You showed yourself to be the one who knew their pain and suffering under oppression, their loneliness and exile, and the one who helped restore our ancestors when they returned home. Through Jesus, we know your oneness in a new way, a oneness with us that outlasts the grave and transcends the world we know. Your oneness was revealed to the early followers of Jesus as they recognized themselves as your body in Christ, regardless of culture or ethnicity or gender or any way of dividing. You are one. You bring us together and bind us as one people. In all of the divisions of the world that we know, may we be united by your love, across all things that divide us. May we recognize your face in each other and strive to be your people, your body, your love to one another. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in our worship service where we give an invitation for individuals that would like to say a word of thanks or praise or to acknowledge something wonderful that has happened, an opportunity to do so. And if there are none that are bursting out of your hearts, then I invite our usher to come forward as we stand and sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs>
presence of the Holy Spirit be with each of us now and forever. Amen. 